follow the river, follow the stream, for it will surpass your wildest dreams. Take no path but the one in your mind and leave nothing but memories and a wild legacy behind. Today I'm going to talk about survivability. I'm Kelly Nightlinger with wildwomanoutdoors.com and my website is designed to inspire people to follow their wildest dreams and get outdoors and go wild. So today, survivability. If you believe you can survive, you will survive. You just need a few basic uh, instruments and a little bit of knowledge to survive in the wild. One of the most basic things that aids in your survivability is a good knife. I prefer Havilis bush tools and blind horse knives. My favorite is probably the Nest Muck knife. And also if you want a cheaper, more inexpensive version of a survival knife that you can carry that's very inexpensive and great for kids would be a Mora knife. And with a knife you can provide heat, uh, shelter, food, and it will enable you to boil water and so and it'll also aid you in preserving food as well. So one of the things you can do with a knife is you can cut down lashing material for a shelter and you can lash that together with natural cordage that you uh, harvest aided by your knife and you can use split spruce root or yucca plants depends on where you're at and what you have available and so there's your shelter and also with a knife you can start a fire by a bow drill. Um, you can use the natural cordage for the string for the bow drill. And the bow you can probably just break off and find a dead piece of limb somewhere in the fireboard. You may be able to do the same where you can carve out a piece with your knife. And there you can create an ember which will create a fire bundle which will aid in your campfire that you're starting which will aid in your heat and you can also boil water with that which will help purify the water and get rid of any bacteria or any microorganisms that may be living in that water and if you aren't able to start a fire you can still survive and under survival situation last case scenario you can drink water that has not been purified um, also if you have a clear plastic garbage bag in your survival kit then you can use that to uh, aid in your water collecting by putting live branches of a tree inside of the bag, closing the bag off with natural fibers or natural cordage that you are synthetic or natural fibers that you might have or natural cordage that you're collecting. Close that off and within 24 hours you'll have eight ounces of fresh water within that bag and you can reuse it. Several times you may need to move it so that you get a fresh branch after a while so that it doesn't get stagnant. And it'll also provide vitamins. Um, pines and cedars have a lot of vitamin C. And you can also use the fire to steep water to make herbal teas with pines you know, and cedar, which are probably my two favorite things. And then also uh, a lot of wild edible berries. Their plants are actually edible. You can take the leaves and eat them raw and chew on them, which will provide calories for you for out, throughout the day. I did that in a survival setting in the Florida Everglades where I survived three nights and four days and I chewed on wild grapes and made uh, traps for crayfish. And we also, as a group, we killed a wild boar and smoked it over a fire with a tripod smoker. And then um, we also killed a cottonmouth and used uh, the meat and you know we split that up and then whatever anybody didn't want I made into smoke bone smoke uh, check snake bone soup the next day which was a lovely cold breakfast but it actually provided me a lot of calories and I was ready to go the next day so it doesn't matter how good it tastes if it has calories in it it's good for you so as long as it doesn't have any poisonous quality. So, and you can also use those uh, hides of the animals that you harvest for par fletches or clothing. You can lash the clothing together with natural cordage or sinew from the animal. You can use the bones for spear points, harpoon points if you don't have any good stone to nap in your area. I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but if you don't have a knife available, you can make one out of stone or make other implements such as, you know, hammers and lash the hammer uh, to the, hand, the handle with uh, natural cordage. Uh, with your knife, you can also carve out a receptacle to boil the water. You can carve it out manually by hand depending on the wood. Uh, I recommend using some green wood or some wet wood so that it doesn't burn up over the fire. Uh, or if you have bamboo in your area, then you're really good to go because that's already got a natural hollow in it to boil water. And after you carve that out, you can um, make some coals in a fire and put the coals inside of that semi-carved out area, which will aid in removal of the 
the burnt out part of your uh, little dugout receptacle. And also, um, if you don't have, you can use those things if you don't have the clear plastic garbage bags in your survival kit. So also with your knife, you can obviously cook food, smoke food. You can also preserve food by just having it hit the sunlight and sun drying it. Sun dried fish is actually really good. Um, so I, I've covered now shelter, food, water, and heat. So those are the basic things that your knife can help you with. With your knife, you can also make other tools such as atlatls, longbows, slingshots, harpoons, uh, spears, um, other knives, uh, you know, maybe a, a, a hand knife point or something that you're carving out of a piece of sharp wood. Um, you can make deadfalls, you can make um, types of traps where they're going to land on a spear point. You can use that knife for natural portage to make a spring trap. Um, there's just thousands of things that you can do with your knife or your handmade knife if you don't have a commercial one available. So um, as long as you have the will to survive and you know a little bit about your, your area, what, what, how to catch the critters that are living there and uh, what types of edible plants are available, you'll survive. You just have to believe in yourself. Um, I've killed a alligator with a 12, from a 12 foot canoe and I've been surrounded by 20 wolves and I had to kill one out of self-defense while by myself in a remote region of Canada. Um, I've also been 45 yards from a sow grizzly bear and two cubs and fortunately I didn't have to uh, harm her in any way. She did what I hoped she would do and uh, I'm sure I did what she hoped I would do as well. It ended peaceably and we both just went back to our daily routine. Sometimes you do have to harvest animals though to survive and for your sustainability and just do that you know, wisely. And I hope today you've learned a few things and I hope that you get outdoors and go wild and I hope you follow your wildest dreams. And I hope I've inspired men, women, and children to enjoy the outdoors. Um, I get along great with uh, men as well as women. A lot of times the people that I'm encountering in the wildlands are typically men, but I really enjoy adventurous ladies and adventurous children as well. As far as the men, I've been an adventure guide for seven years and have adventure-based youth camp. And I've also worked in law enforcement for 18 years and 12 and a half years as a conservation officer where I typically worked mostly with men and also uh, was a public servant to mostly uh, men. And I tend to get along fine with any sex and any age person. And um, I hope that they can all get something from this short little video. Get outdoors, go wild.